how do you move the blocks? How do you, how do they make right. Stonehenge? Those those rocks are nowhere in the region. Mm -hmm. They were carted from some. They found a place where those rocks were uh, would would have been mined, mm -hmm. removed, and yeah, and those are some big ass rocks. Yeah, as are the ones. But it's it's not less impressive because they're just big. Like what the the thing about the pyramids that's so impressive is the precision and the sheer numbers two million our best under six hundred thousand stones. Our best understanding of Stonehenge is that it's a functioning observatory that can actually predict eclipses. So, I got I, I just got to yeah. bitch slap you there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stonehenge not impressive. It's just no, big it's stone. Certain, they're lined. Impressive. They're lined with the summer right. solstice. Right. They have. There are holes that are not stones, but they're 56 holes, which is three times the the Saros, which is the cycle of eclipses, of the matching of the orbits of the sun and the moon in the sky, the paths of the sun and the moon in the sky. And when they match up, you get an eclipse. Is there? Is it's it an eclipse possible? observatory. A guy named... That's absolutely what it is? There's a book published in the, in the 1970s by a guy named uh, 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 David... Dawkins? It's not Richard Dawkins, but it's another one of these. Hawkins. Uh, uh, Rich, Richard Hawkins. Richard Hawkins? Hawking. Hawking. Hawkins. Damn. One of them dudes. Damn. What a, well, we got our top crack researchers here. Jamie's on the ball. Um, just look up. The, the title of his book was Stonehenge Decoded. Just look up the title of that book. Anyhow, uh, it's highly convincing, and we all, we're all there with it. There's no... So it's essentially just a study of the position of the stones in relationship to the... the where the okay Gerald Hawkins. Gerald Hawkins, thank you. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Stonehenge decoded. Uh, so he, I visited Stonehenge as a kid, uh, at age fifteen on an expedition, mm. and he was the expedition head. Oh wow! Yeah. So how lucky for you? Yeah, it was uh, it was good, and that stuck with me, which is why I named this phenomenon in Manhattan, where the sun sets along the street. I saw grid. that. I uh, saw that on your Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So so I named that Manhattan Henge, sort of <laughs> hearkening back to. My early days, thinking about the alignment of the sun mm. and structures that we might build. Cause, so twice a year, for those viewers or listeners who don't know, twice a year, the Manhattan street grid, which is not perfectly aligned north-south, the Manhattan street grid uh, will, the, the sun will set exactly on the grid. Uh, and, and, that and, a great and, and what's up there now, that image, what's not obvious, is that picture is taken along a street that is itself three miles long, and then you're crossing a, uh, the Hudson River, and then there's New Jersey on the other side. So people try to zoom in on it, but really, what you really should do is zoom out from it. And then you get the vanishing point uh, on it. So yeah, all those are zoom, zoomed in. Um, let's go to, yeah, that one looks more like, like my photo. Wait, go back to that other one. Yeah, see, so, so that's on 34th Street, <clears throat> the one you see now. And then you get this sparkling effect. That happens twice a year. That, that sort of crazy wild light effect yes. that looks like yes. photoshopped almost. Yeah. Get, there's a, an image on uh, his Instagram that is linked on my Instagram, the most recent photo. Oh, okay. There he goes. Oh, there's you with the selfie. That's the selfie. Look right. Okay, you. so come on down. Powerful afro. Damn, oh, yeah. That's strong. That was my first selfie. How old were you? I was uh, 14. Four, uh, let me see. It was 19, probably 1974. Wow. So I would have been 15. I think I've been 14 or 15. So your path of curiosity was set Oh, it goes very, back. It goes back. Very early. Right. Uh, but that's not the one we're looking for here. Let's go. Uh, uh, that one. Thank there you. There it is. So that, no, there's another one. Wait, the, go, go back to all of the images. the river is wild. Go, uh, zoom back out. You see all the pictures there. Uh, go to the bottom left. There you go. Okay. That might be the first ever Manhattan Henge photo. What okay. year is that from? Uh, I took that Ele in 2001, right? No? Th and it got published in 2002. So this is before September 11th. This is July 11th. I took it before September 11th, right? Wow. Right. And then I had a means to publish it, and right then, uh, the notice that it's a green light and traffic is ready to knock me over. So, <laughs> so no one is in the streets doing this, but now there are tens of thousands of people that pour into the streets on these days. We post what day you get Manhattan Henge from the American Museum of Natural History, my day job. And then that goes out, the press gets it, and tens of thousands of people spill into the street, blocking traffic. And if you think of all the ways traffic gets blocked in your day. Look at this. Yeah. Look at these dorks. Like the <laughs> all of us, too many of them. It was you by yourself, it's interesting. It's great, yeah, thousands so that's what it has become. Holding up phones. 
And it's all because I went to Stonehenge. Yeah. Wow. So it's a. It's also a an observatory. So was it you that named this? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Check you out. Coined. Coined. I rather say coined. Coined it. it. Yeah. yeah. Manhattan Henge. Because the buildings are like hinges. The mm -hmm. hinge is a stone. Is a vertical stone. It's a vertical structure. And if you made a stone, it's a stone hinge.